What's up everybody and welcome back to Ian's Life. I'm really excited today to introduce you to my new aircraft build. An airplane build on YouTube is something that's been on my mind since I watched Mike Patey build Draco and document the process on YouTube last year. He did a fantastic job and it was really exciting to watch, but it wasn't tremendously relatable. Uh, he has a tool set and a budget that most of us can only dream of. And that's fantastic to watch and experience something that we, most of us maybe couldn't think about, but I wanted to do something a little more relatable. And besides, for it to be relatable, I had to be able to do it. So why not take you guys along for the journey? So this build is a little interesting because it doesn't start with an airplane. It starts with an engine. I'd been thinking about building a little bush plane for myself, uh, potentially from scratch, possibly from a modified kit, in late 2017, early 2018. I started out thinking about something cub style but I really didn't have a power plant in mind. I knew I wanted it to be light. I knew I wanted it to be powerful. I knew I liked the Rotax 912, but I felt like it was a little less power than I wanted. I liked the idea of one of the 180 horse uh, aero style engines. I liked the power of that. I didn't necessarily like the weight and I most definitely didn't like the price tag. So during my searching for an aircraft power plant, I can't remember exactly how I stumbled on it, but I found a video of Steve Henry and his Yamaha powered Highlander. Now this was really interesting to me. I never was a huge fan of conversion engines, but here was something that was designed to make power continuously like an aviation engine. Uh, it was automotive style, which is something that I'm familiar with. I, I'm a motorcycle and a car guy, so these engines are something that are, let, let's say they're in my wheelhouse. So finding that video of Steve Henry and his Highlander really took me down a long path. It brought me to designing wiring harnesses for the Yamaha engines. It brought me to buying my own Apex fuel injected engine to develop that harness with, and ultimately to starting to piece together a firewall forward package, all without having an airplane to put it on. I had always planned on building something for the engine, but I wasn't 100% sure what. Going from the engine to the airframe is a bit of an interesting process because it's all a happy accident. My father was on Barnstormers, found an ad for an Avid B that had been collecting dust and hanger for a long time, it was a project, not an airplane, and we thought, well, this is an extremely inexpensive way to hang an engine on something and probably fly it at some point. So we rolled the dice, bought the airplane out of California to Texas, sight unseen, had it shipped here. Uh, thankfully, not spending an awful lot of money, so we got the whole thing at salvage prices, and that got us an airframe. Buying the airplane sight unseen meant we didn't get to sit in it, we didn't get to look at it. The only thing we knew was it was an Avid B, it's a Kit Fox derivative, it's an early series, and that's it. There's a few of them out there with Yamaha power, so it was obviously possible for us to do the swap, but we didn't really realize what we were getting into until we got the airplane back. So before I get into what we're doing with the Avid, let me address what an Avid is real quick for those of you who don't know. Avid Flyer is the genesis of the entire Kit Fox lineup. Way back when somebody designed this airplane, and I don't believe it was actually intended to be a kit. Uh, that design was released as plans which people could build, ultimately leading to a company that was building kits of Avid Flyers. At some point early on, Kit Fox split off from Avid, and for a while, both Avid and Kit Fox were making extremely similar small airplanes. Kit Fox and Avid produced airplanes side by side for about the models one through three of Kit Fox and the Avid A through C models. Uh, this is back, I th if I get my dates right, in the 80s and early 90s. These smaller airplanes were very similar. They looked an awful lot like the Kit Foxes we have now, but they were substantially different in size, different airfoils, and a lot lighter. Uh, somewheres in the 90s, Avid kind of went out of business. I don't know the exact details on it, but suffice to say they stopped making airplanes. Kit Fox changed hands a number of times. Their airplanes continue to evolve. So what we have is not one of the later series airplanes. You've seen me fly my Kit Fox 7, 
my larger airplane. This is one of the early planes. Two, three hundred pounds lighter and a lot smaller. And remember, we bought it sight unseen. So smaller is going to come into play a lot here later. So from here, let me jump onto the computer and I'll show you what we ended up with. This photo gives you a good idea of what we were working with when we made our purchase. This is one of the actual photos we were provided of the airplane, and trust me, it's one of the better ones, showing us what we were buying. Obviously, not a lot to see here. We could tell we had an airplane, and we could tell that the paint wasn't completely awful, but much beyond that, we really didn't know what we were getting into. Now, given the tail number, we were able to pull up some old photos like this one off of the internet, and even a video showing the airplane taking off back when it was still flying. But this was all we were going on. We didn't sit in it, we didn't fly it, we didn't even see it in person until I picked it up. Now the pickup is when things got really real. For the first time I laid eyes on the airplane, and for one, got to see just how much of a project I was in for, but also got to really lay eyes on just how small this little plane was, and boy was that ever a shocking moment. I don't actually have a photo of the first time I sat in the airplane, but suffice to say it looked something like this. Now, as you might have guessed, at this point I'm having some pretty serious doubts as to exactly what it is I've purchased. But we already have it, so it's time to figure out what we can do with it. So we got loaded up and got it back home, started taking stock of just what we'd bought. Now, it was at this point that I actually started to record some video on this project. Like I mentioned, this is still before the start of the channel, but I at least had an idea that I wanted to do something. The sharp eyed among you will notice that some things have already happened on the airplane. A couple of modifications up at the firewall, I've ripped some stuff out in the cabin area. This is all the start of me trying to fit myself into the airplane without really changing anything too much. But unfortunately, I realized very quickly that I was going to have to do more than just some minor changes to make myself comfortable in the airplane. As I worked on the airplane, I started to realize very quickly there were several link problems. One was foot room. I have long legs and I fit very poorly in the airplane. To be comfortable, I was going to need more room. The second related problem was the obvious way to get more room was to kick the firewall out. Unfortunately, while technically doable, Avids are already notorious for being nose heavy, and I'm adding a little bit more weight to the nose with the new engine, which wasn't going to help that situation at all. Add in a longer firewall and you have a recipe for an extremely nose heavy airplane. This is where things started to go off the rails. To help you understand a little better where we went with this problem, let's go take a look at a 3D model we made to help explore possibilities. So here's the 3D model we made of the original Avid fuselage, as it was when we received it. Obviously there's a few unimportant parts like the vertical stab and the motor box that we haven't actually modeled because we don't need them. What this shows us is how the structure comes together and the amount of room that we have to work with in the cabin. Let's take a look at the side view to see how I do, or more to the point, don't fit in the airplane. Now looking at the side view, I've gone ahead and superimposed a little stick figure man over here representing myself. This is to scale, and it, you can see how my feet end up well beyond the firewall here. This doesn't take into account rudder pedals, rudder pedal structure, brake master cylinders, or anything else that also has to appear in front of my feet, so we've got a pretty serious problem. So how did we solve that? Now this is about version 3 digitally speaking, of the airplane. We tried a couple of different versions, moving different parts, and ultimately many of them were doable, but too complicated and retained very little of the original structure. This particular version actually retains a fair bit. To show you just how much, let me overlay the original onto this. This will actually make a little more sense in side view, so I've gone ahead and displayed it that way. The blue structure you see is the original airplane, while the black is both our changes and the new version. As you can see, things are pretty substantially different in a few areas, most notably the cabin. The birdcage structure, which is what I call this upper section where the wing mounts, is up six inches. And this bulkhead right here, well that doesn't even exist anymore, that's the whole way back over a foot aft of where it originally fell. This gives our cabin a lot more room and also allows us to sit further back in the airplane, which will help with the CG. You'll also notice that our firewall actually falls two inches short of the original firewall despite the changes. Now what are we retaining? Well most of the aft structure here is the same. All of this blue you see in the back is going to be saved. 
A few areas up here will actually be cut out, and of course all of the stuff in the front will be cut out and changed. We are retaining most of the original floorboard structure up to about halfway through the motor box. Forward to that, it's all new, but after that, this is an original rear section. Shutting off the old version for a second and putting the stick figure back in as an overlay, you can see how much better this is going to work. Here we are. I fit in very well, even with the firewall two inches shorter than it originally was. There's plenty of room in front of my feet for rudder pedal structure and motion. I'm very comfortably sat the whole way through here, and with the much higher birdcage structure and top, I can actually sit higher, which gives much more room for comfortable cushioning and for controls to run underneath the pilot and co-pilot's positions. The rear structure, as I mentioned before, is largely unchanged. We are doing some stylistic changes on this strake back here. That's just going to be a part of the vertical stab. We're also making the vertical stab and the horizontal stab, for that matter, substantially larger because the early series Avids and Kit Foxes were notorious for being a little directionally unstable and lacking tail authority. So now that you have an idea of what we're doing with the airplane on the computer, let me show you what we're actually doing out here. We've done a little bit of work already. What we're starting with here is building a platform underneath what I've called the birdcage structure. The, for those of you who aren't aware of how an Avid or a Kit Fox is put together, the main wing spars are two tubular spars coming on the front and rear points right here, these little tubes. Tubes come in here, wing comes out. So since this whole thing is getting moved up quite a bit, what we needed to do was create a base with which we could build from, move that up, and know that everything is remaining flat, straight, and give us a point of reference. So we've already put that in here, and we're about to go ahead and cut this whole upper section loose and start moving things up. And the business end. I guess we're committed we're now. Flyer. <laughs> yeah. We're we're not going back. <laughs> Folks, don't do this if uh, if you paid a lot of money for your airplane. We bought this at salvage rates. <laughs> <laughs> and this one will never be the same. Maybe mm. it'll be better. With the top cut loose we're ready to start moving up, or I should say we're almost ready. One thing we didn't do before the cut that I th thought about and then forgot is we actually need a piece of metal going from this guy right here, which you can see the wobble in, over to the other one, and that wobble's the reason. This needs to be square like I talked about. Now, the nice thing is it's an oops, but it's not a big oops. We have our original piece here that establishes our width, so we can bolt that back into place. But before we do that, we've got a little bit of cleanup to do. All of this tubing that we've now cut off of here needs to be cleaned up, brought back in, and just kind of surface prep on this to get it ready to add material and weld onto. This needs to be bare steel, obviously, before we can weld. So let's get cleaning.
that is the front of an Abbott. Hang that up like a game trophy. I guess. Yeah. You know? Put it on the wall. <laughs> Bag me an avid! Yeah. Oh man. Wow. That uh that got the job done. Um, uh, that's one way of putting it. Our airplane doesn't have a front end anymore. Yeah, but it's gonna have 150 horsepower sitting right here. That'll be real nice. That'll make you smile. Yeah. <laughs> So this should all make a little more sense now. We've gone ahead and cut everything loose, obviously. No front end, no bird cage. We're almost back down to, at least for the forward section of the airplane, all the cuts we're gonna make. Obviously we've got some cleanup to do, we've got stuff all around here. But the important part of this is this guy right here and its equivalent on the far side, these are nice and solid. I mean, the whole airplane moves there, this is a good square platform that we can build off of so that everything we do up here, we have good reference points. Our holes drilled right here that we did earlier, those correspond to the, uh, the birdcage structure, which is now going to be higher up, so we have our points established. This is all going really well. I know it looks alarming, but this is going good. And that's it for day one in the shop with the Avid. Thanks for those of you who watched the whole way through. I really appreciate it. I promise future videos are going to be an awful lot less talking heads and an awful lot more time spent in the shop working. There's a lot of cool things to come. The airplane's really taking shape. It doesn't look like much now, but the platform for future work is there. We're moving forward quickly, and there's a lot of cool stuff left to come. I can't wait to take all of you along with me and show you that. So until next time, like, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.